Hey, how's it going guys? My name's Daniel, aka Hashloops. Welcome to my channel. I'm very excited for today because we're going to talk about the art engine updates that I've been working on and I'm very excited to share this with you. Please note that none of these changes are live on a website anywhere. As you can see, I'm running on localhost and that's because I'm in dev mode. I'm developing these features and testing them out locally before I deploy them on the interwebs. So they are not there yet, but soon you'll be able to play around with these features as I am going to today. So previously I showed you guys how I made it possible to include video with the Art Creator Studio. Now that was a bit of complex situations, especially at the end for the rendering, but I got it working and it's working quite nicely. So I'm gonna show off that, but also there is something very special that I've added and that is, wait for it, 3D. Yes, you can now import your 3D models as well. So we're gonna check that out. It's gonna be pretty cool. So stick around till the end uh, to see all the little updates. I'm very excited. I also add a little settings panel down here where you get to configure the art engine as well. I figured that we need a settings panel. Previously we didn't because there wasn't that many features, but now I wanna make it possible so you can toggle your theme settings over in the settings panel and then decide which uh, model you're gonna use. Currently I've got this Cola Lips. It's just something I came up with. I think it sounds cool. Uh, but basically, I want you to be able to use different models when you go ahead and generate. And also, for those of you who don't want to use these extra features, there's a basic mode which the art engine starts off at. So for example, if I go ahead and I just import uh, some files over here, you can see by selecting one, there's not a lot of settings that you can set. If I go to the background, you can see these traits. They basically just have the Z order and the rarity probability. And that's enough for you to actually layer uh, combinations of your content and produce images and metadata. You don't need the fancy, um, the, the fancy advanced features. The same goes for if you go to the render mode uh, and you look at the export section, you don't have that custom metadata here. But for our purposes, uh, for what I want to demonstrate, I'm going to switch to the advanced mode in the settings. And then if I go back, you see I get extra things like in the export section, I now get to set custom metadata. Also in the group section, now you can see I've got um, X, Y, and Z combination settings. I've got a scale factor um, on the actual images themselves. We get the rules that comes back. Remember, this is an experimental feature as well. But you get a lot more settings. So let's get going. Let me show off some of the, the improvements that I've made. Firstly, I want to illustrate the fact that we can actually work well with video. It's still capped at four seconds, I believe. Uh, I haven't changed that yet for a good reason. It is just to save the browser from just crashing, right? Everything is happening client side. Uh, so it is important to note that. Okay, so let me go and select video data. I'm going to just select these few pieces over here and let's create a group. We're going to organize this by body and then the face and then the props. Now, one advancement or improvement that I've made is the preview image or the preview section, I would say, right? The This preview that you get. Firstly, you'll see that I've removed the uh, 3D parts over there because innately I've made the preview 3D by itself. So what I mean by that is this view that we see is an orthographic camera. So what an orthographic camera does is it doesn't mind the distance between these layers. It will show us uh, from the front view exactly how these layers are going to be compacted on one another. They are not actually com com uh, compressed, I would say. They are just it's an illusion, right? But it looks perfect. If I change the camera angle, now that, that's what I mean by saying that it's innately 3D. It's always 3D. It is just because we're using the orthographic camera, if we align them perfectly, this is what you're going to get. 
So I've made it so it's innately 3D. You can just move around. You always see your layers spread out. But if you click on this reset button, you'll see the view that you're going to get. So here we can see the videos are playing quite well. Um, and they are actually rendering. How are they going to render when you export them? Previously, it wasn't doing that. I had to emulate what it's going to look like here. And then I had to replicate it if we go to the generate part and we just generate these layers, I actually had to replicate what it was going to do. Now the preview, this uh, generated output part and what is being rendered is exactly the same. Here it's not a 3D view, this is the actual video, so you can see I'm playing it. And in the preview section, the videos are just playing by themselves. So we need to click on that. Okay, so basically it's a much more synced process which was very important for me to get right and i'm very glad i did this adjustment so that we can see exactly what we're going to get this was not so important for just images and videos but when i decided to add the 3d parts that's when it became more evident that i need to have a good representation of what's going to render so here you can see the videos I'm going to do a generation again. We're just going to make it maybe three of them. I'm going to generate and then we're going to render. So let me give access to a folder. I've got this renders folder over there. And yes, let's render these uh, videos. Now they're not going to render at high quality. It's 512 by 512. But we'll see what the result is. So here, if I open this up, we can see this the first WebM video so as you can see it's playing a lot smoother um, you know as you can see previously in the first video that I've made of this video section it wasn't playing smooth at all the colors were off now we get a perfect representation of what we're going to get so firstly I'm very excited about that because I broke my head on just getting it perfect so I'm glad that that's now working as well okay so Let's move on to the 3D parts. In order for me to show you the 3D, we need a new project. So I'm just going to uh, refresh and then going to confirm. And we now need to select some 3D assets. Now, I don't have the perfect assets to illustrate uh, the capabilities of this, but I do have kind of got data of video images and 3D objects. And you'll see what I mean just in a second. Here I've got an image and I've got the same equivalent, but this one is a video. And then if we scroll a bit down, we can actually see, yes, there we go. This is a 3D model that you can see inside of the Art Creator Studio. So I think this is pretty cool. You can see your 3D models over there and there's three of them. So we can make them render. Um, so now let's go ahead and create a group. This time I'm going to arrange them the same. Let's just switch over to preview. I'm going to basically put the body, then the face, then some props. And this model folder over here, these are the ones that actually contains the 3D models. So if I select this, you can actually see them rendering. But they're rendering quite high, right? You can see only the feet of this character. In 3D space, we actually see... Um, the, the 3D character is there in full um, glory, I would say. But when we go and collapse this view or actually view it with the orthographic camera from the front, uh, we can see they all look like they are on top of each other. Now, the main thing why I added the advanced mode is because we need a way to position these 3D uh, these 3D characters, but not also the 3D characters. We can do the same with the images as well. So for example, if we want to push this character way down, let's first select a character. Let's say we're going to work with this yellow um, SACC character, which is pretty cool. I want to increase the probability to a thousand. So we are very sure that this one is going to be showing up. Then on the Y value, I still need to just make these things work a bit nicer. Seeing this is 512 by 512, I'm going to make it minus 200. And let's see what happens. So you see it moved down a little bit. I think I need to improve the UI so that I can actually see these changes live because it is going to be a bit 
Um, bit difficult to get this to show up or guess, right? What we need to set this as. So let's get to that yellow character. There we can see, there he is. He's a bit more in focus right now. So what we can also then do is maybe increase the scale um, to two. Uh, so if we increase the scale to two, we can see he's there, but we can definitely move him down a little bit. Now doing this, I've noticed that this is a bit of a hassle going back and forth. I'll definitely need to make this update live. Otherwise, you know, you have to kind of guess where the layers should be, which is not that ideal. Anyway, there's the character, as we can see now, he's a bit better placed or positioned. So we can argue and say, okay, well, we might not need the background and the, the face, so, and the body. So we can keep the 3D and maybe yeah, the face as well. So let's do that. And now we can see here he is, um, you know, in, in this part. I might even move him backwards and then we could actually position some kind of objects on top of him. So this is pretty cool. Let's try and put these glasses on top of the character. Okay, so now that we have our layers where we just have this model and these props, of course they are not going to fit, they are not made for this character, but we might give it a go, right? Check these glasses, I've increased the probability so they are going to get picked. Um, we can see that we've got a Y position, I think we need to increase the Y a tiny little bit, uh, just so that the glasses fits on top of the face of this character, I mean that looks good. We might move it a little bit. Um, to the side with the X axis, so maybe minus five, is that good? I still need to work on these controls because they're very finicky to get right. Um, I must say for myself, it's not a pleasure working with them, right? But uh, that's what I have to work with and I'm still developing the app, so that's cool. Anyway, so now we can see the glasses are a bit more aligned, but they're like very, close to this this character's face, right? This is a 3D character. So we can kind of go and adjust the Z axis. And now we can see here's the combined Z. Now remember, the Z is pretty finicky. We have to take into account where this layer is at. We can see that the current Z order over here for the props is 300 and, and um, yeah, just 300, right? So basically what we could do is we could either move this entire layer upwards and make the clothing go below it but we don't want to do that we basically want to say let's make this 310 right that way um, it should bring the glasses a tiny bit more forward like so and now we can see well we can maybe push it up a tiny bit so maybe like that and let's also reduce the x axis now I would say that is kind of close enough, right? <laughs> anyway, um, but what I want to illustrate here today is the fact that you can actually go ahead pretty soon when I release this, you can actually go ahead and, and add images, 3D models, and videos. As you can see, this, these glasses, they are a video, right? They are not just an image, they are video, and this is 3D. I think this is pretty cool. Let me know what you think in the comments below, please. Uh, forget about the Santa thing that doesn't fit. We might as well just delete that. Um, anyway, so let me know what you think about this. I think it's pretty cool. And I also think that we need to render this at least once. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, something to note is if you start off with a width and a height and you go and adjust it afterwards, none of this stuff will fit. So I'm going to keep it at 512. And let's hope that we get one of these cool renders that we just tried with the yellow character and the glasses. Uh, so I'm just going to show you here. There we go. We've got a SACC with the reading glasses. There it is. And we can play the video. And again, uh, if I now go ahead and select that renders folder, let's make sure that the renders folder is cleared out. And then go ahead and render. So we should see now a video that is produced that has the image as the background, that has the SACC character at the top and the reading glasses in its uh, full shine over there. And there you go. I mean, this is 512 by 512. You can make it big if your videos are big. 
Um, but this is just to show you kind of where I'm moving towards with the media that I want you to be able to use. I think it's so important that as an artist, you need all the tools available, or actually no limitations when it comes to creating. Is this tool perfect? No, it's not. I mean, it sucks that I have to now go back and forth like this and go here and I don't see the image and I need to adjust stuff. That's all things I'm going to fix uh, to make it very smooth and very natural to work with the tool. Um, apart from that, I'm very happy with the updates and how it turned out and the fact that we can actually now mix uh, 3D objects with images. What does this mean for the advancements of this tool going forward? Well, I would like to add animation to the 3D models. I would like to expand more on text, incorporating text as well. But most importantly, I'm just having fun building this. The tools that I'm building is purely for my own enjoyment and I love sharing it with you guys. Um, but apart from that, you know, I hope you enjoyed the video. And the uh, next video that you're going to see is I will be making a lino cut and enjoying uh, the art creation process of actually building something again or painting and, and creating with my hands. So please watch that video too. Let me know what you think about uh, the art that I make as an artist and also what you think of this tool. Have a fantastic day. Cheers for now. And I'll see you in the next video.